That's why the United States is the greatest experiment uh, in socioeconomics in history. What, okay, we're going to have to dig into that. What, what do you mean by greatest? Because Richest. Uh, richest, but it doesn't make it the greatest. I think wealth is the best problem solver in the world. How much of the, the U.S. global wealth has been attained by enslaving other nations, interfering in uh, uh, the politics of other nations, destabilizing other nations, going to war with other nations, coercing, uh, coercing other nations? Probably a lot. Yeah. And so also, so yeah. it's kind of hypocritical. Because, well, because it's foundationally it's, though. Yeah, but but what I'm saying is you you, you have to look at it all. You basically, but everything well, you're against. Yeah, but no, 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 but every, every, everything you've said that you're against, you've now said this is what may, has made the U.S. the greatest. But they've done that to the cost of uh, multiple regions around the world. Certainly, the Middle East, definitely South America. You know, they, they've essentially created slave countries. Mm -hmm. They've coerced countries through the dollar he he hegemony. I always mm -hmm. struggle to say that. I'm a bloody stutter. Um, so I think there's a hypocrisy in that. Well, I agree with you that, again, we're back into this useful fiction territory. When I say the United States was the greatest economic success story in human history, I'm talking about foundational United States, right? We get our independence from England. We have low and predictable taxes. We have hard money. We have a lot of freedom. We have a lot, a lot of life, liberty, and property in North America yep. for the period following the Revolutionary War up until the 20th century, until the implementation of the central bank. 1913, we get the Fed. Everything goes to shit. Yeah, we become a global imperialist. It's a complete disaster. So back to the useful fiction things. Like when I say that about the United States, I'm meaning the United States in one sense of the word. And then you're taking me across the line of the Fed and saying, well, no, you're, you're a hypocrite. So you've basically, your scope is this big on the United States and mine's looking at this. But So you can see where the confusion comes into well, play no, but, here. But, but even if you look at the, the history of the United States, the, the birth of the United States was built on the coercion and death and uh, destruction of Native Americans. That's right. And African Americans. Yeah. Yeah. And all of this, and I wrote about this too, it's like when you, you know, the African slave trade was started following the, uh, agri beads thing, the slave beads. I don't, I don't they were know using the They were using glass beads as money in Africa. Yeah. And basically once Europeans figured this out, they counterfeited the shit out of the glass beads and started buying all their wealth. I think I've heard this, yeah. And then this led to the transatlantic slave trade. Um, 12 and a half million people shuttled through the transatlantic slave trade over a 365 year period. Wow. Uh, I think... 12 and a half million survived, 2 million died. So maybe it was like 15 million total affected. It came out, it was a 365 year affair. When you ran the numbers on it, if you assume a slave works 5,000 hours per year, it comes out to like 7 billion human hours of labor stolen per year for 365 years straight. Prior to the Fed. Oh yeah, this is all transatlantic, but, but here's the point, okay? So seven, let's call it 7 billion hours stolen per year. Direct, visceral, whips and chains, slavery. How much has the Fed stolen per year in terms of human hours from 1980 to 2020? Probably a lot more. 24 billion hours per year. And you take this okay, expansion but of the M2 money supply divided by the average hourly rate, you get a proxy for hours stolen. The point is this, that I did, the Fed did, can do it at a much larger scale because uh, it's less visible and less understood. Of, of, of course, but there's two things. Firstly, uh, have you accounted for population size with those numbers? It's not about population size, though. What? It's just hours stolen. But isn't it, isn't it, isn't it hours stolen per, per man? Wouldn't it be better to at least have a like-for-like -like comparison? Um, I'm looking at absolute hours stolen. You could do it as a percentage of population, I well, suppose. Uh, it, for me, that would be a more useful number. Um, but also, it's a it's a completely different form of slavery. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you know, if you if you if you consider it partial slavery, yes, the Fed has stolen these hours, but you get to live in a, fr a fairly free, so mm -hmm. safe society. It's not uh, a, a racially segregated, abusive whips, chains, and murder society. Mm -hmm. So that the, they are two different things. So it's progress. I mean, one of the things that I think democracy has brought us, and certainly Western liberal democracies, is, is it's brought a, fair, a, a certain fairness to the world in certain places. Mm -hmm. And it's brought a better treatment of human beings. 
in certain places. Mm-hmm. Everything has nuance. Everything has gray mm-hmm. areas. But I make this joke with Danny. It's like I laugh at, I find Swedish libertarians hilarious because they live in one of the <laughs> safest, best places in the world and they want to burn that shit down mm-hmm. and they want to, they want anarchy. Uh, and I just think that's a really fucking weird take to have where you've built probably one of the best, safest places in the world to live. And we know what happens when you have a breakdown in uh, society. We know what happens uh, in places of lawlessness. Mm-hmm. The weak get crushed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, the weak get discriminated against. Why would you want to burn that shit down? So let's just try to look at it this way. And this is the grand arc of human history in a way. If you go from ancient Egypt, uh-huh. right, you get two or three dudes that are sovereign. Everyone else is basically a slave, more or less. Now, there's some gray area there, sure, but most people don't have strong property rights. They're not able to build businesses, create wealth, add value, add to the division of labor, increase global capital stock. Again, the more stuff we have, the easier life is, the less we have to fight over. All of this is based in strong property. And that's why I think the United States was the best economic experiment we had in that regard so far. 